Today, I'm going to be installing and configuring the receiver and the gyroscope for the Freewing 70 millimeter F16 version C. Now, before I get too deep into everything, this uh, particular model will be configured for flaperons and main wing spoilers. And I've already installed, at least physically installed, afterburner lights on the tail, a moving pilot head in the cockpit, and landing lights on all three wheels. Now, what I'll be covering today is connecting all of that to the radio and setting the radio up for it to work. Now, to complete this install, I'll need a receiver, a transmitter, gyroscope, the associated cables that come with the gyroscope, two two-way splitters, two-sided tape, and scissors to cut the tape with. One of the first things that I notice when opening up this model is the enormous amount of space available in the cargo or payload area, even with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery installed. I typically have all of my aircraft set up the same way with the same functions on the same channels. Ailerons are on channel one, elevators on channel two, Throttle is on channel three, rudders on channel four, flaps are on channel five, retractable landing gear is on six, brakes are on seven, gyroscope functions are on eight, landing lights are on nine, and if I have navigation lights, they are on 10. We're going to start by talking about our ailerons, which are going to be used and are configured as flaperons. So fortunately, another good thing about this particular model is that the two aileron servos actually come into the payload area on two separate servo plugs. This wire right here, this plug is the right aileron and this is my left aileron. When configuring for flaperons, I typically plug my left aileron into my aileron channel. So in this case, it would be channel one. So we're going to go ahead right now and we're going to plug this in. We're going to bypass the gyro temporarily because we want to just make sure that the servos are all working. For flaperons, since the ailerons function as the ailerons and the flaps, I'll plug my right aileron into the channel that my flaps would normally be plugged into. In this case, that would be channel five so there. So both my ailerons are now connected. So our two-way splitter plugs into the throttle cable, going to the ESC, and then it goes to, the other one goes to the afterburner lights, into there, and then that particular, I mean that cable afterwards plugs into my throttle channel, which is on channel three, like so. Let's plug in our elevator line from the junction box into channel two. And then the last thing coming out of the junction box we're going to go with are going to be our landing gear and that is in channel six. And then our rudder is where we're going to use our second splitter. We have our two leads coming off our rudder. One of those leads connects to the actual rudder in the aircraft plugs into one half of the splitter and the other half plugs into our moving pilot head which looks a whole lot like me because it is me so we're going to plug that into there and we're going to kind of just let that sit over on the table out of the way while we work on the other parts of the uh install. Channel 7, which are our brakes, here. And this, this particular ESC does have reversing, and I absolutely do use the thrust reversing uh, because my field has a runway, and landing with that runway, yeah, you really need to slow down. Channel 8 is our accessory channel for the gyroscope, but since we haven't connected the gyroscope yet, we're going to skip over that. And our last channel is channel nine, which is the landing lights. 
and that is this plug right here. So I'm going to plug that guy into the landing lights into channel nine right there. And so all of our basic setup is complete. Let's go in the order of our channels. Let's try our ailerons. Ailerons are rolling in the correct direction. Then the next channel up is our elevators. I have one elevator working and one elevator not working. So that needs to be checked. It looks like this wire right here doesn't have a home. So we're going to plug this back into the junction box here into the elevator slot. Give our elevators a test move. And there they go. So the elevators are moving in the opposite direction, but they're both moving. So we can move on to the next step. Channel three is throttle and we can already see that the tail flame lights are glowing blue, which is a good sign, but we need to give it throttle because these are actually programmed to change color depending on the level of throttle. Channel four is the rudder. And of course, the rudder drives three different servos. The nose gear for taxiing and the pilot figure. Channel five are the flaps. And I have them programmed. These are takeoff flaps and these are landing flaps position. And of course, it's programmed for flapperons. So while these flaps are active, we check to make sure our ailerons still work, and they do. Now, the channel six test ends up being a test of channel six and channel nine because my safety feature that disarms the motor is also connected to the retracts and it prevents not only the motor from operating when it's in, when the safety is engaged, but it also prevents the retracts from retracting. The way that I know the airplane is actually in flight mode and not in ground safe mode is by the lighting system. So in this case, my landing lights let me know whether or not the plane is in safe mode. So when I arm the motor, my landing lights come on and I've got three landing lights so that when I'm coming in for a landing, if I see three white lights, that means the plane is safe to land and all my wheels are out. All three wheels go in. The landing lights are programmed on a one second delay, so they won't come on until about a second after the wheels are back out. And that all works. Channel seven is the brake channel, but it combines several functions in one. And of course it reverses the thrust on the motor to provide engine braking, but it also goes full up elevator and full up spoilers on the main wing. So if everything works properly, when I flip the trainer switch, all three of those things should happen at once. So let's give it a try. And it works. And the only thing that needs to be adjusted is our elevator channel needs to be reversed. The elevator should be going up when I do this. And they should be going down when I do that, but they're not. So we're going to correct that by reversing it. So we're going to go into model setup and we're going to go to our limit screen. We're going to go to our elevator channel, which is channel two. And then we're going to jump over to that page there and we're going to invert it. So now when I move the lever down, the elevators go up and I move the lever up, the elevators go down. Now that the receiver is installed and all the control surfaces are moving in the appropriate and correct directions, it's time to install the gyroscope. The gyro installation is pretty straightforward. It goes physically and electronically between the receiver and the control surfaces. And in order to do that, we'll use these short jumper cables to connect the gyro to the receiver. And then the cables that are coming out of the receiver and going to the control surfaces will be plugged into the gyro. But before we actually get into connecting the gyro, there's one quick setting that we need to adjust. And that is right here on the gyro. There's a switch 
for a setting called Aileron 2. That's because we're using two separate servos controlled independently to control our ailerons because we're using flaperons. So that aileron 2 setting here needs to be switched to the on position. There we go. Now it's set for aileron 2. So we're going to start with our aileron, which is channel 1. So we're going to grab one of our extension cables or jumper cables, and we're going to connect on the gyro to aileron in. And that's this connector right here. And then on our receiver, we go to channel one, which is our left aileron. And we're going to disconnect that guy. And we're going to connect the cable coming out of the receiver going to the actual left aileron. We're going to connect that to aileron out on the gyro. And then the jumper cable coming out of the gyro for aileron in, we're going to connect that to channel one on the receiver. And since we've already started on our ailerons, we're going to now jump to channel five, which is our right aileron channel. Two, three, four, five. And that would be this guy. right here in our right aileron channel let's see if we can untangle some of this jumble there we go our right aileron channel we grab our second jumper cable and on the gyro there's a aileron r in for right aileron we plug our jumper cable into there. The other end of our jumper cable plugs into channel five on the receiver, like so. And then the aileron connector going to the right aileron, then connects to the right aileron out on the gyro. Right aileron out. All right, ailerons are done. Our next channel is channel two, the elevator. So we take our jumper cable and we connect it to elevator in on the gyro, like so. And then we find channel two, our elevator channel on the receiver, pull that, Connect our jumper cable into channel two on the receiver, like so. And then we find our elevator cable here. And we connect it to elevator out on the gyro. And it's on its way back to the actual elevators on the airplane. All right. And our next one is our rudder channel. So we find our rudder in on the gyro. Connect it to there. And then our rudder on our receiver is channel four. Here. And then we connect our jumper cable into channel four. And then our rudder out on the gyro connects to here. Like so. We can now test our channel eight function, which is the gyroscope mode. And it works. So we just simply use a small screwdriver, turn up the gain on all three of our gyroscope channels to maximum sensitivity.
close it up and prepare to do a test of the gyroscope function. The purpose of the gyroscope is to help keep the plane in straight level flight when the pilot is not adding any input in the controls, which means that if the plane wants to roll, then the gyroscope should move the control surfaces or the ailerons in this case to try and counteract that roll. So that means if the plane rolls to the right, then the gyroscope should make the right aileron go down and the left aileron go up. And the same thing should happen if it tries to roll to the left. But what I'm seeing happening is the opposite. So that means that the gain on the gyroscope needs to be changed and moved into the other direction. So for the pitch axis, the same should happen. If the nose of the plane wants to go down, the elevator should go up. And if the nose of the airplane goes up, the elevator should go down. And they do. So the elevator direction is correct. And the same thing for the rudder. If the nose goes to the left, the rudder should go to the right. If the nose goes to the right, the rudder should go to the left. And that is what we have. So the only channel that needs to be adjusted is the aileron channel. So we open up the canopy, go to our aileron channel, turn it in the opposite direction, and test it again. Now, when I roll the airplane to the left, the right aileron goes up. And when I roll it to the right, the right aileron goes down. So now all three control surface axes have been correctly adjusted on the gyro. So the only thing really left to do at this particular point before flying is to adjust the sensitivity down so that the gain on each individual channel is not too sensitive, which would cause oscillations and porpoising in flight. And this concludes my setup and installation of receiver and gyroscope in my free wing 70 millimeter F-16. Next stop, the airfield. See you out there for a great maiden flight. C'est fini.